The recording should start. Okay. The recording has just uh, started. So good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Let's take a moment please just to pray together and then we will get started. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Stephen, would you please like to lead us in prayer? Thank you, Lord Father, for this wonderful day that you've given us, Father, uh, for adding one more day into our lives, Father. Uh, we just surrendered this day and our lives, Father, and this class into your hand. Um, I pray, Father, that we would learn something new, uh, Lord. Uh, and whatever has been taught, Father, we would be able to understand and grasp and put those into our lives, Father, uh, in action, Father, in the days to come. And uh, and this would help us, Father, build your kingdom uh, and expand your kingdom, Father, uh, in a way that, sh that you would be pleased, in a way that, that your name would be glorified. Uh, Lord, uh, I just surrender pastor into your hand, Father, just anoint him, uh, just submit the rest of the, the entire class into your hand, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me just, um, amen. All right, so um, last week we spent some time talking about uh, policies, standards, and guidelines uh, that we need to, you know, document, put in place um, for the various things that are being done uh, as an organization, as a Christian church or a Christian organization. It's important to ha <clears throat> have policies very clearly spelled out. And uh, like I you know, tried to just share that some, some of these policies would uh, evolve over time because you, know, you learn through some of the experiences and some of the situations you face, then you say, oh, I need to have a policy uh, for that kind of a situation if it repeats uh, and so on. Uh, some uh, some of these things you can do preemptively. That means uh, you can know in advance, you know, especially for routine things. Okay, like uh, different activities where, um, in example, graphics or software development or uh, you know certain ministry activities which are routine. You can know, and so it's better you know right from the beginning you put certain standards, certain guidelines, certain policies in place uh, that really helps in the smooth functioning. Today, we are going to um, start uh, talking about another important aspect about the uh, of the church or ministry. So when I say ministry, it could be local church, it could be any kind of Christian organization. Another important aspect is uh, which we call as operations and we having to do with uh, systems and processes. So let me just uh, share this document that I have put out for us in uh, our class notes. Now, uh, for some of you, you know, these, these terms, operations, systems, processes may be familiar. Uh, for some of us, it may not be familiar. So, uh, you know, don't, don't get worried if, if it's not familiar, you, you will understand it as we go through uh, what we talk about. Um, and uh, uh, so, so essentially, uh, as you are part of the church or ministry, the there is, of course, a spiritual side which we call as ministry. But the church is also an organization, or the ministry is also an organization. Now, uh, sometimes people don't look at it that way. They only look at, oh, it's only ministry. You know, I, I'm doing ministry, I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm praying for people, I'm serving people spiritually. That is true. But it is also an organization. I mean, um, the, 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 the work is being done, that is ministry. But what is supporting the work is an organization. And for that organization to 
function if you break it down into smaller you know what is that organization made of an organization is really made up of many systems with processes you know any organization if you break it down it is made up of many systems with processes and uh, the functioning of all of these systems and processes we refer to as operations. So operations is just a generic term of, hey, or how are all the systems, the, the components of the systems within this organization, how they are all functioning and so on. So if you want to look at you know, a, a system and a process, just this is more of an introduction, we'll get into more detail. Just, i just given an example, okay. A system is like a box, you know, a black box, something. Uh, uh, and, and you put an input and outcomes something. So the system does works upon the input and converts the input into a desired output. So for example, you can think of a, a, a blender, a blending machine, right? So the blending machine takes input. Uh, it takes in fruit, cut fruit, put it, put it inside example. Uh, it, it has power supply, uh, all of that. Then you turn the blender on, and what are we expecting as output? You know, juice. You know, it's blended that juice, and the fruit, and gives us fruit, uh, fruit juice. So just a simple example. Okay, so we have a system which is a blending machine. The input to the blending machine is, of course, cut fruit and electricity power, and uh, the system does its job, and the output is fruit juice, okay, yes. So there's input, output, and then there is something uh, to the system that does the, does the work on what has been given to it. So, you know, uh, this paragraph is more of a technical thing. It's, you know, uh, a system uh, is a collection of components. Uh, there's an inflow of uh, maybe information, other materials that come into the system, okay? That's, in, in our example, it would be uh, cut fruit and uh, electricity. And then the system has boundaries. Okay, here in this case, it's a physical system. And, uh, and outside the system is the environment. And uh, the usually uh, the environment may or may not have uh, effect on the system. In our case, the blender, yeah, the environment has it because if you don't have power, the system will not work, right? And uh, and uh, there's feedback that the system tells, you know, gives information on what's going on uh, to other systems that connect to it. In our case, we're just looking at an isolated system, a blender, okay? But if you look at the organization, and I just try to create a picture, uh, the organization has a whole, the church, for example, the church, so if you think this church, this, this whole church or ministry, it actually has many ministry areas, right? So example, you'd have, you have a youth ministry, you have women's ministry, you have children's ministry, you have worship ministry, you have, you know, uh, missions, you have books, publications, for example. You know, so let's say these are our six different ministry areas that make up the, that what that's what the organization is doing or the church is doing. And for each ministry area, for that to function, example, for the youth ministry to function, actually, if you look at it from an organization side, uh, it has a lot of systems happening inside. A lot of you know different uh, uh, things that do the work and there's a flow of information uh, across, you know, between these systems. So example, within the youth ministry, there may be, uh, you know, things that happen. Uh, uh, you know, there's the uh, weekly you know, life groups that are happening. So there's a system that needs to make sure life groups happen. Then there is a monthly uh, uh, youth gathering happening. So there's a system that makes sure all the monthly youth gatherings should happen. Then there may be, you know, the youth, uh, uh, 
youth uh, um, missions, you know, so something that makes sure that youth are going on missions. So like that, you could have several systems within this one area and they interact, they all interact with each other, share information, so on, right? So if you look at the organization, really, if you break it down, there are a lot of systems that interwork working together, right? And uh, although I have put these in separate boxes, really all these ministry areas similarly are interacting with each other. They're not, they're not working in isolation. They're all interacting with each other to make up what the organization is doing. So in our context, when we talk about a system, we're saying some repetitive function or activity that needs to be done to achieve a specific ministry objective, right? So that's one of these boxes. Some repetitive, it's happening, you know, life, gr uh, life groups are meeting every week, youth life groups, example. Uh, youth meetings happening every month, once a month. So it's a repetitive thing. It's happening over and over and over again, every month or every week, yeah? Uh, and it has to be done in a certain way. Now, in our context, especially, this system here is actually made up of people, you know? So we use the blending machine as an example. The, that machine was a system. But for us, a system is not a machine. Most of our things are, you know, in the ministry, it's all people. Uh, so we have various people uh, with different skills who are doing different activities and they're working together and they make up a system. So literally you could almost think of a system as a team of people uh, with different roles and different things. And they're all working together to achieve a common objective, which is run the life groups make the monthly youth meeting happen. So they're all working together. But then there's also process. That means the other, there's a flow of information. Uh, there's a flow of people. There's a flow of finances. So that that is also happening. So what we must understand is for this organization to function very well, right? for this organization to function very well, and basically eventually the ministry to happen very well, the systems and processes must be designed and uh, must be organized very well, okay? So we look at some example, uh, different examples as we go along today. So uh, I just mentioned about youth ministry, but you can just look at an accounting department, okay? The finance department, I'm just calling it accounting, some people call it finance, it's okay. At the accounting department. So, so this this whole big box, you can think of, okay, let's say that's a ministry, accounting. But accounting has many systems within it. Uh, we have uh, offertory counting. Then we have deposits have to happen, purchases have to happen, uh, expense claims come in from staff and they have to be paid, salaries have to be paid, vendors have to be paid. Reports have to be given to people who need it and budgets have to be made and given. So take, for example, just a simple one system in the uh, accounting department, offer counting. This system has to be well designed and the connected processes put in place. Let me explain. So offer counting, when does it happen? Usually, this of offertory is received Sunday mornings. Now, we haven't done it for a long time because of the lockdown and all that. But in pre-lockdown days, what would happen? Every Sunday morning, as part of the service, offertory will be received. But it's not just a simple thing that people give money. No. First of all, for offertory to happen, you need offering boxes where people put their money into. But these offering boxes have to be secure. So that means, you know, there has to be some, some sort of a lock or something so that money is put in the boxes and are, are, are safe. So that needs to be, that's all, all, I'm just talking about the details of one system, just one box, one system, right? What goes into it? So you need offering boxes, then you need ushers who are ready, 
who are trained, who know how to, you know, pass the offering boxes and uh, collect all the offering, you know, the offering boxes at the, are, are taken to the back uh, of the church or a designated area where they're kept until the service is over. But the offer offering boxes, uh, 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 as part of what we do as a good practice is the money must be counted immediately at the venue before it is sent to the church office. That's step one. So you need a team, a counting team. And again, the counting team, you have, say, example, five people. Uh, as a team in, 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 the, in, in, B of, in, 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 the, in the site of all the five people, uh, the boxes are opened and money is put out. Then the counting happens. Everything has to be written down in uh, a book, you know, so so much came through cash, so much came through check, whatever, all written down. It has to be verified by two people, signed off, the money, the book, everything is put in a sealed uh, packet. And that sealed packet has to reach the church office on the first working day, which is Monday. So, so this whole offering counting is a system and how that all the things take place are the processes within that system, right? That means how the offering is received, how it is counted, how it is documented, how it is all sealed, how it is sent to the church office. So one system and there are processes happening within that system for it to function well. Now, if something goes wrong in the system, uh, especially now in this case, in this particular case of offertory, uh, uh, you know, uh, it could be quite bad. For example, uh, in this case, it could result in the, uh, in the loss of money. You know, that uh, let's say if, uh, I hope it doesn't happen, but <laughs> let's say if money is stolen, you know, somehow, somewhere, uh, before the, uh, from the, after the time the money is collected, if it doesn't, and by the time it reaches the church office, if money is taken out, uh, uh, what will happen? Uh, the, you know, first of all, the person who gave it will feel very bad that their money didn't reach the church and was not used for the ministry. And the ministry is going to be impacted because that money is lost. So the system has to be very um, tight uh, in this particular case. The processes have to be very clearly defined. Uh, what the system must do has to be clearly expressed so that that, that one system within, you know, in, in that ministry area, in this case accounting, should function very well. Okay. So but for the accounting department to function, remember there are many other systems also. Offered accounting is only one system that is part of this unit, this department. So like this, you know, everything has to be defined. So deposits, if you think about deposits, that's also a system. So that means that when the money comes to the church office, so how, how will deposits happen? Well, it's like this. The money comes to the church office, over there in the church office, everything is reconciled, checked once again, right? So the book is open, the logbook is open, the cash is counted, the checks are checked, looked at, it's okay, everything's fine. Yeah, it's in order, counted once again. Then that amount has to be physically taken to the bank and in the bank, it has to be deposited and we have to get a receipt that tallies everything. So if the money that came in was 50,000, in the, it was 50,000 was counted in the, in the service, at the end of the service. 50,000 was counted once again in the church office. 50,000 was once again deposited in the bank account. All three records must tally. Then we know that this depositing system has worked. Some, if, you know, something goes wrong and, you know, 50,000 came in, but 49,000 was deposited, 
that's a problem. You know, uh, something's wrong with the deposit system. There's, there's a leak there and uh, money's being lost again. Right? So, but that's another thing. And so these two systems, offered recounting and deposit, are connected and they're exchanging information and uh, information is being cross-verified and checked. So like this, I'm just giving examples. So different systems have to be clearly defined and then they all work together for one department to work. And then of course, this department is also working together with all the other departments. Another good way to look at this whole system and process is by looking at the human body, right? And I've just copy pasted some information here uh, about the human body. It's just from Wikipedia, it's just general information. You know, so the human body has uh, these main uh, systems. So we talk about the cardiovascular system, digestive, endocrine, uh, exocrine, immune, or lymphatic, muscular, nervous, renal, or urinary, reproductive, respiratory, and skeletal, right? So these are the main systems in the body. So each system is doing something. And, and, and together, all these systems together make up the human body. But all these systems are working together. They're not in isolation. You know, the bones don't go off and say, wow, you know, we're doing it on our own. You know, the bones are their part of the body. They all have to work together. And they're also providing something for the rest of the body. So example, the bone, the skeletal system, they protect all the important organs in the body, right? They protect the heart. They protect part of the cardiovascular system. They protect part of, you know, all the other organs are being protected by the bones. The, you know, the brain is protected, the lungs are protected, the heart is protected. So other systems are deriving benefit from the skeletal system. Similarly, the respiratory system. The lungs are not breathing in isolation. The lungs are breathing, but the whole body, all the other systems in the body are deriving benefit from the respiratory system. And there is an interplay. Uh, that means the exchange of information. So if the body is walking fast, uh, the, you know, the respiratory system has to breathe you know, more so that it can provide. So various systems, they are benefiting other systems and there is exchange of information, flow of information across these systems. And all these systems together make up the body. So that is how the organization of the church or the ministry must function. So there is a ministry side, you know, there's a preaching happening, there's a worship happening, there's a prayer happening, there are uh, members are being cared for and missions are happening. And okay, that's all the ministry side, but what is behind all that operations? There is this organization that has to operate very well, but for that to operate very well, how can you make it operate well? You have to think about it in terms of systems and processes. Okay, so I hope that helps us understand. For this whole body to function, every system has to be working well. So if there's a problem with our muscular system, you know, we can have good bones, but if the muscles are not there, the bones, you know, cannot, the rest of the body cannot, you know, will, will be affected. Or if the problem with the digestive system, or, you know, so any problem with any system affects the whole, the overall body. Okay, so we can have excellent, you know, uh, you know, one system could be very ex working really well, but if another system is not doing well, still the body uh, suffers. So when we think about the administration of the organization, the church organization, ministry organization, we need to think about putting good systems and process in place, right? Uh, the system and process that you put must be very good, okay? Because if the organization is doing well, the ministry will happen well, okay? Uh, but like we said, ultimately a system is made up, especially in a church organization, the system is actually made up of people. And uh, which will be our next chapter when we talk about human resources and taking care of people. 
And the system is made up of people with different skills and roles and so on. And people grow. People are not like machines. You know, now in a in an industry, uh, you could have systems that are just purely machines and the machines will keep doing their work. But in a church organization, a Christian ministry, most of the systems are actually people with skills who are doing things. And uh, people grow. People may want to move vertically. They may want to move laterally. They may want to leave and move externally. So people uh, move. So there is people movement. So we have to design our system independent of people. That means, uh, you know, in some way, yes, of course, there are, it is dependent on people, but suppose there's a person who's doing, who's part of the system, and he decides to maybe change his role. He goes to do something different, joins, you know, uh, becomes part of another area of ministry or something, he moves. The system shouldn't collapse, right? Uh, we should be able to bring in another person with similar skills or and the system should keep running, you know. So the, the person can be replaced with somebody else and that work should continue happening, okay. So that is also another important criteria to take into account as we design systems, right. Uh, uh, okay, let me just pause here to see if we're all together. I, I'm not lost. In, are, are we all together? Everyone understands uh, what we are talking. Yeah, Daryl, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, oh, Darryl, you have a question? Go ahead. No, no, Pastor. Uh, I was trying to say we are all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I thought you had a question. Okay. So we are understanding till now. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll go forward. Okay. So let me go back to the uh, PDF. Just wanted to check. All right. So when you're designing a system, okay, in the in the organization, what are some of the things we want to look for? Okay. So first question, we say is, okay, how can we do things better, right? So we shouldn't uh, just accept, okay, this is the way we have been doing it. So this is the way we will always do it. No, we should say, hey, okay, uh, fine. We have been doing it like this till now. How can we do it better? And th these are questions we need to keep asking constantly, right? Because we may have put a system in place, say, you know, three years ago, uh, which is fine. Maybe it was fine for that time. Okay, maybe uh, we, we said we have only three people, so we will do like this. Okay, fine. But time has changed. Uh, we have to go back and look at that system that has been, is there and say, hey, can we do it better now? You know, or what, or what do we need to do to improve the quality of what's happening? Okay. So, uh, and we'll give, we'll give some practical example a little later. I'll just give the theory part. So we have to say, okay, how can we do it better? Another thing from efficiency perspective, how can we do things faster, right? Now, faster is always good, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, it will save time. It will save, sometimes it may save money. Sometimes it may increase productivity. You can do more in, in less time. And eventually people are going to be helped, you know, because ultimately this, everything is supporting the ministry. So at the end, people are going to be helped. Uh, if, if hel you know, whatever, if it's happening faster. Example, you know, I just example. Uh, uh, going back to our accounting department, okay. You know, uh, typically in the industry, there is like a 30 day period before a vendor receives payment. You know, so there's this 30 day credit thing. It's kind of like an unspoken rule. It's not a rule, but it's just an understanding that people generally have, okay, a vendor provides a service, he will get paid in 30 days. But my question is, hey, if you have the money, why can't you pay him right away? What's the big deal in waiting 30 days? Because if you pay him right away, he's going to be happy and he's going to provide better service. 
if you keep him waiting 30 days, uh, he will feel, I mean, yeah, and, and we can say yeah, everybody in the industry keeps you, keep, does it like this, I understand. But why can't we be different? Yeah, so uh, what do we need to do to make it, you know, uh, almost immediate? Well, uh, the only thing we need from the vendor is once the vendor has uh, given the service, uh, we need an we need a invoice from the vendor. Uh, we need to understand, uh, you know, where the payment has to be made. The rest is uh, it has to happen. That's all. So, one of the things we did, uh, we said, look, as far as APC, APC is concerned, we should pay our vendors within maximum within 48 hours. It means within two working days of receiving a, receive, uh, an invoice, pay it. Okay. Now, sometimes we may fail in the sense that if the, you know, if there's some delay in the, in, in, in uh, of this, you know, if, uh, if there's some gap in between or the invoice doesn't reach properly or you know, some, some miscellaneous things, but normally, you know, so let's just work, we will streamline this process, you know, make it simple and increase our responsiveness. So what is the advantage here in a context like this to increase a response? The vendor feels good. If the vendor feels good, he will oblige us, meaning he might, you know, go out of the way to provide a service because he knows, hey, these people, the moment I send an invoice, you know, as soon as possible, they're going to pay. They're not going to wait 30 days. They're not going to make me wait. So overall, we benefit. Of course, vendor also benefits. I'm just giving an example. So, you know, we can design our own system saying we will make it, you know, 24 hours or 48 hours for payments, even though outside they may do 30 days. You know, we don't have to follow that. We can make things productive faster. A third part of our system design, of course, is economy. That means... Uh, uh, we want to, you know, avoid waste. So when I say cheaper, I don't mean cheaper in quality. I just mean, uh, you know, like you don't want to waste money, right? You want to make the most of money, time, and people. So, uh, so when you look at uh, uh, designing a system, you want to say, okay, I want to make sure that there's no wastage here, that we get the most out of the money, the time, and the people that are being put into getting the work done, right? So some questions we would ask is, uh, you know, uh, how can we reduce the cost of the inputs? So if you go back to the start, when we talked about the making juice, uh, how can we get the, the, the fruit? How can we get it at a lower price? You know, we don't want to get bad fruit, then you'll have bad fruit juice. But uh, if you can get, you know, at least, the same quality of the fruit, but get it at a lower price, uh, it is better for everybody, right? We are saving money for the, you know, the organization. So you look at some question like that. Uh, are we wasting anything by not adding value? So for example, you know, uh, uh, there used to be a time that we used to print our invites, you know, uh, uh, I think, uh, say, maybe uh, my my my, my uh, dates may be wrong, but I think till 2008 or something like that, you know, we used to print invites. So if we had an event, uh, we would print poster, we would print uh, uh, handbills, or we would print small cards. Uh, we will give it out to all the people in the congregation. We will stick it here and there. All that, and then uh, usually what uh, we would see is that a lot of these things were lying wasted. You know, uh, that means the event happened, uh, but these printed posters and things like that were lying wasted. It wasn't actually used. Now, slowly, what we also the good thing was, you know, okay, more and more people started using phones, and. Um, uh, people are using WhatsApp, uh, SMS, WhatsApp, emails were, you know, slowly becoming common. So then we said, why should we continue printing uh, these invitations? We can digitize everything. You know, it's cheaper. All, all, all the graphics team has to create the poster or whatever. And then send it out. 
you know, you can send out an email, you can send an SMS, WhatsApp, put on Facebook, Instagram, etc. It doesn't cost us to do that. So at some point, uh, I, I don't know which, when I forget the year, we said we are stopping printing. I remember at that time when we made the decision, people were, up, you know, like there was like, hey, why aren't you printing? Why aren't you printing an invite? I remember that initially when we are making that change, right? Uh, people were uh, a little like, why are we not printing posters? Because, because we are making a change. Uh, there is a, you know, there, we are seeing that things are being done differently. So we can do it. Uh, and then eventually, you know, uh, we changed. So right now we don't print any, you know, flyers. So the whole, so when you talk about promotion, promoting an event, you know, we have saved money in that respect. You know, I don't know if there was a question on the chat. Let me just, I heard a thing. Let me just see here. Oh, Steven said, okay. I don't know. Oh, okay. Conan, okay. No problem. All right. So, you know, so that's just one example where, uh, that system of uh, promotion. So if you think of doing promotions, event promotions, we had a system, this is how we will do it. It was working fine, you know, up until that time, but uh, we can redesign that system. Kids say, hey, we don't need to print. And uh, the motivation behind it is economy, right? Uh, we can save some money there. You know, so we redesigned that system, moved only to digital promotions. A fourth criteria that you want to keep in mind is edge. Yeah, it purposely chose all E words, excellence, efficiency, economy, and edge. That means differently. Okay. And I'm not saying we are in competition with other ministries or with the, the world. It's not from a competition point of view, but it is purely from how can we meet the need differently? Right? So even as a church or as a ministry, we need to think, you know, how can we meet that need differently? So that is what gives us the edge. Uh, whether you're saying differently from the world or maybe differently from what is already there. So example, Bible College. Okay, we have a ministry called Bible College, fine. Why you want, many people ask, why you start, why, why do you want to have another Bible college? There are many Bible colleges already. Well, it's because of this, the difference. And the main difference is the content we are delivering. Because some of the things we deliver in our Bible college is not being delivered in the Bible colleges around us. So it's not trying to be saying we are better or we are, we are you know, but it's the edge. So we are meeting something different. We're meeting a need in a different way, right? So when we're designing a system that is part of this whole big organization, for every system, we ask these four basic questions. Can we do it better? Can we do it faster? Can we do it cheaper? Can we do it differently? And this whole different, different questions you can ask is, can we do things in an innovative way, right? In a different way. Yes, everybody may be doing it in a certain way, uh, that is fine, but can we think of some innovative way of doing it? You know, the same system. Uh, can we identify and meet a need that is not being met? You know, so uh, counseling ministry, motivation is that, you know, there's a, there's a need, people need it. Can we meet that need, okay? Uh, of course, I'm speaking about a ministry area, but that ministry area is broken down into systems. And for every system, you need to ask these four basic questions. So then that will help you keep improving the system design, you know, how it's working. Uh, and when you look at it, better, faster, cheaper, different, better, faster, deep, cheaper, different, or excellence, efficiency, economy, edge, whatever you look at what is happening in the organization, you ask those questions. And don't be afraid to ask those questions because only when you ask those kind of questions will you make improvements within your organization, okay? Uh, so what are some thoughts to keep in mind when you're designing a system to get something done in the organization? Keep it lean, keep it minimalistic. That means don't 
unnecessarily make it big and complex. Your goal will be, what's the simplest way I can do it? Okay, what was the simplest way we can achieve the output? Okay, second, put the right people in the right place. You know, because if you don't have the right person doing the right thing, a system will not work, you know. Um, so example, if you go back to the blender, you want to blend fruit. Now, the, the, the blade that you fix inside the blender is important because a blade, it has to be the right blade. Uh, if, you, if you put the blade that, uh, uh, that does the dough, you know, kneading, and then you put the fruit in, <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna get fruit juice. You can run the machine, put the electricity, but you're not gonna get fruit juice because problem, you haven't put the right blade in the blender. So it's important, right people, right place. The third thing about a good system is there has to be feedback and improvement. Okay. But keep in mind, like we said in the very beginning, uh, uh, all the systems, all the ministries are working together, just like the human body, all the systems are working together. So only if one system is very good, it still will not make the whole body function better. Right? Every system has to be good. So uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a person looking at the organization, uh, you need to be looking at how can we improve all systems? Are all systems optimal? That means are they doing the best they can at this point in time? Maybe one or two years, of course, we will improve. But at this point in time, is everything working fine? Because all the systems are interacted, you know, connected. So just improving one area will not make sure the whole organization is improved. You have to connect. So part of the system is also the process. That means, you know, uh, uh, these systems, like we said here, each box is connected to the other boxes. So these lines are representing the processes, things that are happening between the systems, right? So not only must the system be well designed, that is what's happening inside here, but the connectivity between them, you know, the processes between them should also be very, very efficient. So let's talk about that, you know. Uh, we'll just use one example now. Uh, uh, maybe we'll continue this uh, on Friday, but let's think about an example. Okay, let's say, you know, the ministry has a publications ministry. Books are being printed and distributed. So suppose somebody requests for a book. Every, see, the person requesting a book, he, the, he, the person does not know what is happening inside the ministry. Okay. So example, okay, All People's Church. All People's Church is, has books that they're giving out. Okay. Some person, say from Delhi, he wants to receive the book. This is part of ministry. Uh, part of our ministry is the book must reach the person. The person has no idea what is going on inside the organization. He is only looking at ministry. I want to receive the book. So it is our responsibility that everything that happens inside here must be uh, very efficient so that as soon as possible, practically possible, this person should get the book as soon as possible. Okay, they've requested a book, they should get it as soon as possible. You know, if they request a book and they, it reaches them after three months, uh, it is okay. And I mean, in the sense, okay, the book did reach them, but to take three months to send a book to a person in Delhi is not, uh, it's not good. You know, it's not a good, uh, 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 you know, the ministry can improve, that system can improve, you know, what is happening there. So you have to look at that whole area of ministry. Yeah, we want to serve people by giving them the books. Okay, but how are we going to make it happen? No, we're only talking about, so one part of the, the book ministry, okay? So you have to look at it like this. Look at it from a system design perspective is what they call it. 
a system design or a system and process design, or they would say from an operations management perspective. Okay, so you have to think like this, you have to look at it like this. The request can come to the church in many ways. It can come through an email, come through a phone call, it can come through a letter. Uh, somebody could make a request at uh, any book table, you know, uh, uh, that we have, maybe at a conference, maybe at a Sunday service. They may send a request to a staff. They say, oh, this person is working at APC. I'll just, uh, I know him, I'll just request him. Uh, there could be other ways, you know, even through a bookstore because some of our books are given out of the bookstore. So the request may go to the bookstore. But ultimately, all those requests, we need to have a process in place where all those requests goes to the person who is recording the book request. Right? So we have to make sure. Now, so the emails are directed, you know, that, that's one step that eventually it should reach this person who records the book request and they take the details. You know, what is the language they want the book in? What are the titles they want? How many do they want the quantity? Uh, where is the address that has to be delivered and whose contact details, you know, that person's name, correct name, phone number, et cetera. So all that is important. So this person will make sure that all that information is captured and record the request. But then the system has to kick in. The moment this is recorded, uh, somebody is responsible for getting the book out, you know, say, dispatching the book or the set of books. But for here this to happen, there are a lot of things involved. There's a printing involved, delivery involved, inventory has to be maintained. This person reviews the book request, packaging has to happen then it has to be dispatched. And then that particular request is marked as completed. Okay, we have checked it off. Okay, so this is another, you know, set of systems that are all, all these things have to work together and how they interact with each other. The processes have to be efficient so that the goal, ultimate goal is as soon as a request is uh, made for a book, the goal is the book should reach the person as soon as possible, right? So the goal, that's our ministry goal in this particular case. We are serving people through books. As soon as a request is made, the book earliest possible, it should reach that person. But for that goal to happen, all these systems and the interactions, which is the processes should be designed to be most efficient, okay? So the systems, that is each part of what is happening, the recording, packaging, dispatch, uh, has to be designed, how is it going to happen? And their interactions, these arrows are indicating processes, their interactions must be designed to work very efficiently and we should constantly look at it. Uh, we should constantly uh, keep improving it. Okay, so this is one example of a ministry area. So like this, we have to look at so many different areas in the ministry. So many things are happening, you know, worship and youth and or children and uh, so many things are happening. Everything has to be looked at and say, okay, is the system designed properly? Uh, to make sure the the you know the the four E's that we want is it excellent is it efficient is it economical is it is it providing some edge every system is designed properly and everything happening the process the interactions information flow transaction flow you know sometimes there's a flow of money there's a flow of information uh, is that all being working efficiently, okay? So we will pause here. On Friday, we will start with this whole scenario and we'll ask some questions, you know, what are the systems that are here? What are the processes involved? What are the things we should preemptively prevent, break down, 
you know, example. The person is recording a request, but doesn't record which language. Well, things will get blocked. Or where to find out what language you want. Because this person cannot send the books if he doesn't know which language to send. You know, one, one simple example. So if that goes wrong, everything is interrupted, uh, disrupted. So like this, you have to think, OK, so I have to make sure this person must know that in recording a request, all these details are required. So that becomes part of this whole system here. So you look at, OK, what are the things that could go wrong? How do we preempt those things? So in a proper system design, you will uh, be preemptive against possible problems. You know, preemptive. Uh, before it can happen, you should make sure it doesn't happen. You know? So we'll talk about, you know, how do we make sure this process thinks, uh, what, how do you think uh, to optimize the system and the processes? How do you do it? Okay. So we will pause here. Uh, I didn't keep time for questions. Uh, uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Okay, so we'll pause here. We'll pick this up on uh, Friday um, and just uh, talk about this. How to be? <clears throat> how do we optimize the system and the process so everything is running running smoothly? Right. We're just looking at one example, but we have to apply this to all the things that are going on inside the organization. Okay, so uh, let's close in prayer. Just uh, would like to request somebody to close in prayer. I see Samuel has joined us today. Welcome, Samuel. Thank you for joining. Um, could somebody close and we will dismiss, please? Somebody can close in prayer. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this wonderful day, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time. Thank you for helping us to um, gather this time of Father God. And I thank for today's class of Father God. Thank you for being with us thank you for keeping away from all the distractions of father god jesus uh, let our hands be diligent of father god help us to be efficient in our ministry uh, in, uh, in at work in our lives of father god jesus thank you father god thank you for establishing your plans uh, in our church in our ministry in our lives of father god jesus thank you father god and also pray for pastor uh, thank you father god thank you for thank you for the wonderful blessing yes of father god jesus let him grow strength to strength and glory to glory of father god jesus thank i pray for all the all the students who are here father god jesus um thank you father god i just uh i pray that uh your your uh, uh let us be efficient and let us be uh, a channel of blessing in all the areas that we work of Father god jesus i praise you on in, in jesus matchless name i pray this prayer of father god amen amen thank you everyone have a good afternoon. I'll see you again Thank Friday. We'll continue this class. God bless. Bye now. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.